All right, everybody, today we're going to be going over our midterm exam review sheet. Let's begin. Number one says the absolute value of four plus negative eight. Well, we both know that the absolute value means how far it is away from zero. So from zero, if I have a number line, for positive four is one, two, three, four away from zero. And negative 8, of course, is going to be way over here. But it's still going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's still going to take 8 steps to get away from 0. So now we've got 4 plus 8, and 4 plus 8 is 12. Next, we've got negative 17. Uh, minus uh, uh, negative 3. Well, we remember that whenever there is a number or a sign next to a parenthesis, it means we're going to multiply it to what's inside. And following PEMDAS, we have to do that first. So negative 17 stays the same. We multiply the negative times a negative, which makes a positive. And now we have negative 17 plus 3. Well, that's going to be negative 14. Next, we have a mixed number minusing a fraction. Our denominators are the same, so we can go ahead and pull this off. But our first number that we're going to subtract uh, from our second number, or our second, first number that we're subtracting from uh, our second number is going to be uh, bigger, so we have to make this number bigger here, so this number can be subtracted from it. Two ways to do this. The first way is to do, turn this into an improper fraction. So this would be 5 times 4 would be 20. 20 plus 1 would be 21. So one way to do it is to say that I have uh, 21 over 5. And I'm going to subtract 4 over 5. And now that's going to leave me with six, uh, no, 17 over 5. And 5 goes into 17 three times with 2 left over. So my answer would have to be 5, or excuse me, 3 and 2 fifths. And if I look, that would be D. The second way to do it, which some people find is easier, I'm going to do that over here, is to realize I can borrow one from here. When I borrow one, I borrow one of the denominators. So I'm adding 5 up to here. So if I borrow one, I'm turning this into a 3. And this 5 up here uh, gets added on to the 1 to make a 6. So now I have 3 and 5, 6. Minus 4, four fifths. Sorry, that was 3 and 6 over 5. Minus 4 over 5. 6 minus 4 equals 2. And 3 minus 0 gives 3, so that's 3 and 2 over 3. As you can see, you get the same answer either way. All right, let's try number 4. Number 4, the denominator is not the same. We remember that before we can add or subtract fractions, the denominator has to be the same. So I'm going to uh, see what is the lowest common denominator. I know that if I multiply 5 times 3, I can get 15. But whatever I multiply to one side of the fraction, I have to multiply to the other. That's going to give me 6 over 15. And now I can go ahead and combine them uh, because the denominators are the same. Okay, that eliminates all this stuff. And now I have uh, put an addition sign here. That's what was there before. Right there. 3 plus 6 is 9, so this turns to 9 over 15. And 9 over 15 can be reduced because both of these are divisible by 3. Right? 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that means this can be reduced to 3 over 5, which is D. 
Let's go to number 15. Number 15 is pretty easy because we're multiplying fractions. When we do that, we just multiply the top number to the top number, the bottom number to the bottom number. Well, 4 times 4 is 16, and 7 times 7 is 49. And that's about as easy as it gets. Uh, number six, dividing fractions. And remember, when we divide fractions, we're always using K of C to figure it out. Well, K of C, or for some of you that learned it from other teachers, KCF, means we're going to keep the first fraction the same. So that's going to equal 2 over 5. We're going to flip the second fraction, or for some of you, uh, they change from division to multiplication, and then they flip the second fraction. It goes to be 5 over 3. And then, uh, of course, we change from division to multiplication, as I indicated. And so now we're ready to multiply, just like we did up here. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5, well, that's easy. That's 15. Now, for some of you, you realized right away you could have used the butterfly method and took away the 5s. And that would have left you with 2 times 1 and 3 times 1, which we know was 2 thirds. But for those that did it the long way, remember, you have to reduce. Both of these are divisible by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Our answer has to be 2 over 3. Number 7 says if 1 mile is 5 kilometers, 2.5 miles equals what? To solve this, I'm going to set it up as a cross multiplication. I realize that I have 1 mile and it's equaling 5 kilometers. Now it's asking me for 2.5 miles. Well, I know they have to equal each other for it to be proportional. That means I'm looking for how many kilometers. To solve this, I'm going to cross multiply. which means I will multiply the 1 times x, and I'll multiply the 5 times 2.5. Well, if I do this, I realize 1 times x is really just going to be x. And 2.5 times 5, I think that's 12.5. That means x has to equal 12.5, and there we are. Let's go to number eight now. It says, how is a constant term different from a variable? A term for it, an expression that represents a real world situation. Place the correct terms with correct definitions. First one says, does not change. Well, we know that variable varies. That means it can change from time to time. The constant will always be the same. So when it says does not change, that means it has to be constant. And when it says changes in value whenever the value of a variable changes, what is that? Variable term, variable. All right, we're ready for number nine. Which expression is equivalent to the one below? Well, we have to combine like terms here. So we're going to combine our a's and we'll combine our b's. 5a plus 2a equals 7a. It's kind of like saying five apples plus two apples. Now we have negative b plus 6b. Well, negative 8b plus 6b means I'm taking the big number, minus in the small number, keeping the sign of the big number. Since the big number is 8, means the answer has to be negative. And 8 minus 6 is 2, so it's a negative 2b. My answer has to be c. Number 10, which expression is equivalent to the one below? 
Well, remember whenever there's a negative sign or a number in front of a parentheses, we multiply that to everything in it. So we have to change everything inside here. Well, negative times a 2a is going to be a negative 2a. And a negative times a negative 2b will be a positive 2b. Now we're going to move this number right over here under this one because we're lining up all the common terms. Negative 2a goes under 5a because they both have a at the end. And plus 2b goes under negative 7b because they both end with b. Now that we've moved it, we don't need it there, and we can combine these together. Well, 5 minus 2, right? 5 apples minus 2 apples, that's going to be 3 apples. And negative 7 plus 2, remember, whenever our signs are different and we're adding and subtracting, we take the big number minus the small number, so that's 7 minus 2 is 5, and we keep the sign of the big number. The bigger number was 7, so we're keeping that sign of negative. And remember, these were b. So our answer should be 3a minus 5b. Remember, Lerma says use the greatest common factor uh, to factor the expression below. I want to see what number goes into and what letters go into every one of these terms. Well, I know that with 6, 15, and 27, the only thing that goes into all of them are 3. Now, 3 goes into 6 2 times, 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 3 goes into 27 9 times. So I know that my number that goes into everything is 3. There's no letter that is in all three of these terms, so there are no letters that are going to be part of our greatest common factor. Well, now I know that 3 times what equals 6x? Well, 3 times 2 is 6, so that means 3 times 2x will be 6x. Next, what times 3 equals 15y? Well, I know 3 times 5 equals 15, so 3 times positive 5 will be uh, 3 times positive 5y will be 15y. Next, I have a negative 27. I have to remember what number can I multiply to 3 to get negative 27, and that will be a negative 9. And there are no letters there, so my answer should be 3 times 2x plus 5y minus 9. Look at that. Letter B. Number 12 says, Fabian harvests 18 pounds of tomatoes from his garden. He sets aside 2.4 pounds of tomatoes to make spaghetti sauce. If he needs two and three, three fifths pounds to make a batch of soup, how many batches of soup can Fabian make? Drag the numbers to right and solve an equation. The numbers may be used once more than once or not at all. Well, at the beginning it says he only has 18 pounds of tomatoes from his garden. That means all he's got is 18 pounds to work with. So everything has to equal 18. Next it says he sets aside 2.4 pounds for spaghetti sauce. He doesn't say that he makes a, a lot of spaghetti, uh, multiple amounts of spaghetti sauce. He only does it once. So since I know that I'm multiplying this times x and this one, I'm not multiplying to anything, it makes sense that 2.4 will go here because he's not multiplying 2.4 to any certain amount. He's only doing it one time. Next, I see that he needs 2 and 3 fifths pounds to make a batch of soup, and they want to know how much soup he can make. Well, we don't know how much many soups he can make, so that's going to be our unknown variable, x. Now we've got to take 2 and 3 fifths and turn it into a decimal so we know which one goes here. Well, 2 and 3 fifths can be solved two different ways. I can turn it into an improper fraction, which would be 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 would be 13 over 5. I know 13 over 5 would be 2. And let's see, uh, I would say 0.6 if I put it in a calculator. Fairly certain. And let's just try that. I'm going to put it in a calculator so I can show you. If ever you get stuck, just grab a calculator and use it. 13 divided by 5. 
Now, the second way I could have done it is to realize 2 has to be the whole number because it's right there. And I could just take 3 and divide it by 5 and find out what I get. 3 divided by 5 is 0. 0.6. So I would just add 0. 0.6 to 2. And look, I've got the same answer. So I look for 2.6. It's right here. Remember, don't ever put a number that is not one of your choices in the box. Okay, you're sure to get it wrong. Next, we're going to solve this problem. Well, we know that if we have 2.6 times x plus 2.4, that equals 18, the first thing I need to do is get my number away from my variable. I always do my letter last. So the opposite of positive 2.4 would be negative 2.4. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I do to the other. Remember to line up that decimal. And that's going to give me 15.6. My equal sign comes down. And so does 2.6x. I do not bring anything else down because 2.4 minus 2.4 is 0. And there's no need to put 0 in an equation. Next. I'm going to go ahead and divide 2.6 away from 2.6x. That way I can get x by itself. Whatever I divide from one side, I have to divide from the other. Now I've got 15.6 divided by 2.6. I'll play it safe and use my calculator. That's going to equal 6. I look at my choices and I see 6 as one of them. My answer is 6. All right, let's move to number 13. Number 13 says solve this equation. Well, much like what we did over there, we have to look for the number first that we're going to subtract because we always do the letter last. The letter is x and it's accompanied by 5, so we're going to leave that last. First, I'm going to find the opposite of 45, which would be negative 45. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. That's going to leave me with, uh, let's see, 50. And let's see, that'll be 7. It's like 17.50. So 5x has to equal 17.50. That means I'm going to take 17.50 and divide it by 5, All right? Remember, if I have 5x, I'm just going to bring this problem over here so we've got room. I have to divide 5 away from 5x. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. 17.50. 0. Divided by 5, it's going to equal 3.5. So my answer must be 3.5. Next, let's go to number 14. Solve this equation. We're going to have to distribute properties first. So 4 times, uh, let me see a little error here. There should have a 2 or a decimal right there between my uh, 1 and 2. So I'm going to correct this really quick before I move on. All right, thank you for being patient. Now that I got that corrected, we can solve this uh, the way it should be. 4 times 6x is going to be 24x. You know what? I'm going to move this over to this side so we can work it out really much easier. 24x. And remember... I not only have to multiply 4 to 6x, I have to multiply it to negative 1.2, which would be negative 4.8. And all that has to equal 120. Notice I did not multiply 4 to 120 because 4 is not next to it. 4 is next to the parentheses with 6x minus 1.2. Now that I have my equation, the opposite of negative 4.8 is positive 4.8. Whatever I do to one side of my equal sign, I do the other. 
Remember to line up your decimal. That's going to equal 124.8. So all that has to equal 24x. I'm going to divide 24 from 24x so I can get x by itself. Whatever I do to one side, I do the other. And so now I know that my problem is 124.8 divided by 24. Let's put that in our calculator. That equals 5.2. So my answer has to be B, 5.2. All right, 15 says solve this inequality. Once again, I got to distribute properties. 2 times 1.5. Well, that's going to give me, let's work this one over here, um, 2.1.5. Well, that's going to be 3, I'm pretty sure. I'll make doubly sure, but 2 times 1.5. Yep, it's still 3. And then 2 times x will be 2x. And it's a positive, so it'll be a positive 2x. And all that has to be greater than 13. Now I'm going to leave my letter last, so I have to move my number first. Opposite of positive 3 is negative 3. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And now I have 10. On this side, which has to be less than 2x. I remember to divide 2 away. And that leaves me x is greater than 5. All right, let's look for that. x is greater than 5 is d, so d must be my answer. Let's go to 16. Each month, it says a phone company charges $20 for 500 minutes of talk, plus 0 0.20 20 cents, uh, for each additional minute. Unlimited texting costs $10 more. Choose an expression to show the cost of a bill and texting plan for one month, which includes going over 500 minutes. Well, we know that they're going to charge us $20. And then texting, because we're doing talk and text, is $10. Well, 20 plus 10 is 30. The 20 was for the phone and the 10 was for the texting. Well, let's not stop there because I said it has to include going over 500 minutes. It said for 500 minutes of talk time plus 20 cents. So that means we're going to have to add 0 0.20, 20 cents. And since we don't know how many minutes we're going to talk over, that will be our x. All right, so let's look for 30 plus 0 0.20x. And there we are. Number 17 says, which expression is equivalent to this expression? Once again, we simply take uh, the like terms and put them together. I see this is an a and this is an a. So since this is positive, this would be a positive 3a. And since it's a positive, this would be a positive times a positive 2b. Now we combine them together. Negative 10a minus 3 is going to be negative 7a. And negative 5b plus 2b will be negative 3b. That's negative 7a minus 3b. Looks like a is our answer. 18 says, which graph represents this inequality? Well, I'm going to solve it just like an equation. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Let's rewrite it over here so we got some room. I'm going to subtract 8, which means we subtract 8 over here. That means negative 3y has to equal, well, we're adding two negative numbers. 
And it really came up sloppy. I don't know. I get confused. We're adding two negative numbers. Uh, we add them together. This is like I borrowed seven dollars from you, and then I borrowed eight more. So that means I owe you fifteen dollars. Now we have to get that negative three away from negative three y, so we'll divide it away. When I do that, I have to divide it from the other side as well. Now I've gotten rid of all this, which leaves y. Remember, we're dealing with an inequality side, not an equal side. And what we have to remember is whenever we divide or multiply by a negative number, we have to turn our symbol around. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is a positive 5. Remember, a negative divided by negative is a positive. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So y has to be less than or equal to 5. Well, right here, it equals 5 or it's less than it. So a has to be our answer. 19 shows a graph shows that uh, many sheets of paper are folding uh, the graph shows how many sheets of paper a paper folding machine can fold in a certain number of minutes. How many sheets can the machine press in 20 minutes? Well, down here, it shows the time in minutes. And over here, it shows how many sheets it can fold. So if I go to 20 and I go up to the line, I see that it can fold 3,000 sheets in 20 minutes. All right, so right here, the answer would be C. Number 20 says, use the greatest common factor to factor this expression. Once again, I have to see what goes into every one of these. Well, I'm thinking 9 does. Uh, 9 goes into 9, 9 goes into 18, 9 goes into 27. If I was to go ahead and do this the hard way, I'd say I'd have 9x. What makes up 9x? Well, 3 times 3, right, uh, times x. And what makes up 18y? Well, that would be uh, 9 times 3, or 9 times 2, excuse me. But I know 9 is 3 times 3, so I have to scratch out 9, and then put times 3 times 3. And then multiply it to y. Last will be negative 27. Well, negative 27 is going to be, well, let's see, uh, that's 9 times 3. And uh, with a negative in front, of course, times a negative. Uh, then I'll have to scratch up my 9 because I know 9 is made up by 3 times 3. Now I need to find all the things that are the same in all three. Well, I can see that I have uh, a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. Uh, I also see that I have a 3 here, 3 here, and 3 here. No other letters are the same, and no other numbers are the same, so I have to stop there. Well, that means I'm going to take the two things that are common, 3 times 3, and put them together, and that makes 9. So I know my greatest common factor will be 9. What times 9 equals 9x? Well, 9 times x. What times 9 equals 18y? Well, a positive 2y. What times 9 will equal negative 27? a negative 3. <clears throat> and look how easy those numbers were to find. 9 times x, look what was left over, x, x. What was left over on 18, 2, and y, 2y. And what was left over over here, our 3, and our negative, negative 3. So our answer has to be C, 9 times x plus 2y minus 3. 21 says, <clears throat> Haley paddled a canoe 
one fourth mile in one two thirds hour. How fast did she paddle? Well, we got a, a fraction divided by a fraction. And when we do that, we know we have to use good old KCF or KFC, whichever one you want to use. Keep change flip. We'll keep one fourth the same. We'll change to multiplication. And then we'll flip the second one. Well, one times three is three. Four times two is eight. So our answer has to be three over eight. That'll be D. 22 says if the ratio Y over X is the same for all related pairs of X and Y, what does that mean about the relationship between X and Y? Well, think about this. If the ratio for X or Y or Y over X is the same for all related pairs. In other words, if we have a table and my ratio for all my numbers, remember the ratio is taking the Y, putting it over X, right? The Y and putting it over X. In other words, taking Y and dividing it by X. If they equal the same thing, What does that mean about the relationship? Well, we all know that that means it's proportional. Okay, it will not always make it positive. I don't even know what a receptacle is. So that means they have to be proportional. Number 23, using the value 228 over six to find the constant of proportionality, write the equation y equals x or y equals kx. Well, remember, every fraction is really a division problem. So this is nothing more than 228 divided by 6. Well, 6 goes into 22 uh, three times, making 18. 8 comes down, and then I got a 4 left. 6 goes into 48 eight times, so my answer must be 38. So I'm going to plug that into my equation because y over x is always k. So if I put in my equation y equals kx, that means y has to equal 38x. And y equals 38x is my very first one. So I'll circle a. We're on 24 already. Which graph indicates a proportional relationship? Well, this one's pretty easy, right? Whenever a line is straight and goes through my origin, it's proportional. Well, this one is not straight, even though it goes through my origin, so it can't be proportional. This one does not go through my origin, even though it's straight, it's not proportional. Letter D does not go through my origin, even though it's straight. The only one that goes through my origin and is straight is C, so C must be my answer. We're on our last one, number 25, and it states, does the table represent that X and Y have a proportional relationship? Once again, like we said on the other problem, we have to divide every one of these Y's by X because we're always looking for Y over X. We're going to divide Y by X. So now this means we've got to take uh, 4.8 and divide it by 120. We're going to have to take 5.4 and divide it by 135. We're going to have to take 6 and divide it by 150. We're going to have to take 7.2 and divide it by 175. And if they're all the same, then yes, it'll be proportional. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, well, I'm going to use my calculator to kind of make things easier for me. 4.8 divided by 120. That's going to equal... 0 0.04. Next one, 5.4 divided by 135. That's going to equal 0 0.04. So far, so good. Got a match. Next one, remember always to clear your calculator before you go to the next one. 6 divided by 150. That equals 0 0.04. Well, I guess it's going to be proportional. 
0.04, but remember, I have to check every one of them if I'm going to be sure. If even one of them is different, it's not proportional. So I'll take 7.2 and divide it by 175. <clears throat> Whoa! That did not give me 0 0.04. It gave me 0 0.04 with a whole bunch of other numbers like uh, 1, 1, 4, and I kept going. Well, well, the rule is if every one is not identical, it is not proportional. So that means my answer has to be A. If it was 0.4, I could have said it was C, but it did not equal 0.04, so it's A. Well, we've just went over every problem you're going to see on, on your midterm exam. Hopefully this will help you pass. If you had any problems with any of them, practice, practice, practice again. Have a great night and see you in class.